I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily vlog of life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be tackling something that may seem a little bit less than pleasant, but it's a really important bit of understanding all the communications that happen around visiting, talking about life in places like Nicaragua. And it's something that for my viewers, if you're watching this show, interested in traveling to Nicaragua uh, or possibly considering living here, maybe as a short-term resident, digital nomad, or maybe making a full-time life here, retiring here, whatever, that you need to have some of these tools and thought processes uh, at your disposal because there's going to be people, there's going to be dissenters who want to tell you you're making a bad decision or try to imply that you're doing something that you're not. And having just a show you can link to uh, could be really useful, but I want to give you the tools to have good discussions around this. So we're going to do our best to cover these topics. We're going to get to that right after the bump. Okay, first of all, this is my office. You get to see kind of the how the sausage is made here. I got my computer. You can see kind of where things are laid out. I've got the nice window light. I just felt like doing something different this morning. I wanted to do this kind of quick and easy because I'm trying to speed up my process for the day. I've got time in between meetings. So I'm going to be reading an email that I received uh, the other day, but this is a follow-up to uh, when someone asked me uh, if I could release their, their blocked YouTube comments. I don't know what those comments were because I never see them, but you can tell from the tone here what likely was in there. One of the things that I'm very I'm very passionate about is having what we call leading questions or leading statements where you ask one thing with the intent of sneaking in false information that you're implying and making it sound like or trigger in the brain of the person you're talking to that they've accepted the thing as fact when in fact it's never been discussed and it's unestablished. So it's a very uh, malicious way of communicating and you can imagine that this it happens constantly in the comments we're very diligent about deleting those because they're not honest comments. Um, in any way, that is not someone in, in any capacity attempting to do something real. And sorry for the phone in the background. I forgot to silence that. Um, and so we, we need to be aware of these kinds of things. So I'm going to read this mail that was sent to me personally, which I find very surprising because if anyone knew my content, they would know that this would not have the working effect that it seems because I talk about this all the time. But I don't want to um, silence people, right? Um, but this is this is obviously stuff that needs to be addressed and how you're going to think about it is important. So um, this is the response, uh, leaving out the pleasantries. Um, by living there, the Nicaragua, obviously, uh, and promoting the country, though, it does give the impression that you promote and or agree with the government. What would you say to that? And So I'm making this video to tell you what I would say to that. And couldn't it be a disservice for someone who ends up moving there or visiting there and opens their mouth a little too much, getting themselves in trouble? I almost feel like it's a disclaimer you should give in every video. So, okay, so let's tackle this. There's a lot of pieces here and a lot of things that are implied. So first of all, um, let's talk about the most general thing. By living in a place and promoting a country, right, as a, a tourist, that you are therefore promoting the government. Well, let's ask this in other contexts. Has anybody ever felt that by going to Disney World and being excited about it and liking it that you're promoting the actions of the American government? Um, no, that would be completely absurd, yet that's a real comparison. Uh, if you were to be a tourist and you go to France and you take pictures with the Eiffel Tower and you talk about places that you could visit in France or why it might be a nice place to retire, does that mean that you are fundamentally opposed to freedom of speech? France being a democracy without freedom of speech. No, that does not imply that. And there is no one on earth who would be able to make an honest claim that they thought that. It does not mean that. By going to the United States, it does not mean that you agree with the things in the United States. It means that you, or it implies that by going to the United States, two things. One is that you believe the things to be true. It doesn't mean that they are true. And I'll follow up with those assumed beliefs. But it only means that you think that they're going to be true. Nothing means that it is. And then the second piece is that you believe whatever result happens at the end of the day is good for 
you and your family. You don't move to, for example, the United States for the purpose of loving the governmental process. People just don't care about the world that way. It makes no sense whatsoever. And it should never be implied that anyone does because no logical human and no generally emotional human would ever have that thought process. It is so far from how people work. What people think is, well, by moving to this country, will I be? And you've seen my videos, most likely, about why we moved to Nicaragua, and I very clearly address this. We care about things like safety. We care about cost of living, or maybe our ability to earn money. Mostly people moving to the United States, it's about the ability to earn more. People moving to Nicaragua, it's about the ability to save more. But the underlying principle is the same. You're going to get more out of your life by being in that location, depending on your needs. But it's all about what's good for you or good for your family. And it can be things far outside of, you know, safety and money. Those are main drivers, but it could be close to other family members. It could be that these are countries you had a right to live in, right? Maybe you think that um, South Africa would be the perfect country for you, but South Africa says no. Well, that doesn't mean that you disagree with South Africa. And if you get stuck somewhere else, it doesn't mean that you do agree with them. It just means that you had to live where you had the option to get the things you need. And so we don't look at the world from a political standpoint as normal humans. We look at it as where gives us the things that we care about. And for the most part, most humans aren't even aware of how political processes work and mostly wouldn't care if they were given that information. It's not really relevant to normal people. Uh, in America, there has a tendency to be a very strong preaching that uh, politics are religion and that you must be religious in a political way and that you have to care about other people's politics, but only as they're good for you. Like it's very complicated and doesn't apply to anyone outside the United States and is very, it, it just is a very different thing. Now, it is important to note that as a tourist or even as a resident, you do not, period, by definition, care in that capacity about the internal uh, workings of a government, any government, literally anywhere in the world. You just don't care, um, except for maybe your own wherever that is, right? Your home government. You always care about your home government because it's your process that you oversee. But anywhere else, you never care. Now, you may care because you're part of a religious group who cares about how other people are governed and you want to force like a missionary, right? But just like a religious missionary, it is, you're going in to try to take over a place. You're trying to indoctrinate. You're trying to, it's, it's a colonizing act, right? Just, just like the Catholic Church coming to Latin America was a militaristic uh, act of colonization, of imperialism. That is, that's what that represents doing the same thing with uh, uh, a political thing, going to another country and being like, you have to bend to our political will, our beliefs in, po in po politics are more right than yours. And we don't care what your people want, you're going to do what we want. And it's the antithesis of democracy, right? Democracy says that uh, people in a place should choose what they, own, what they want, right? And if they, but if you don't like the things that they choose or the process by which they do that choosing, then it really, borders on religion. It's a very different thing. So that you can have that like religious, like, ah, I'm going to do this. Or you can be from one country and want to affect other countries through foreign policy. But let's talk about that. Your internal stuff, no one should ever care about. When you start affecting other countries, now we're talking about foreign policy. And you can, as uh, a tourist or as a resident, care about the foreign policy of a place. So if you are aware of their foreign policy, then choosing to go to a country that is, for example, at war or supporting a war or committing atrocities and supporting atrocities or anything like that, then as a foreign uh, intervention, yes, maybe going to those places or staying in those places uh, suggests that you at least tacitly um, permit that behavior, that you're not outspokenly fighting it. But that is not the same as internal. So that's the first piece. You just don't care about these things. And that's really important. So you would never in any other context ever imply such a crazy thing as by living in a place or by promoting tourism in a place uh, that it suggests that you support not just the actions of a government, but every action of a government and not just foreign actions, which in most cases we don't even know about very much uh, for most countries. And if you're American, you're used to foreign policy being a really big thing. It has a lot of international interactions because of its size, how wealthy it is, a lot of things. But if you're going to a small country, we'll pick like Costa Rica, um, 
I dare you to try to come up with a comprehensive list of Costa Rica's foreign policies. You can't, right? If you're a diplomat, maybe you, you could come up with a reasonable one, but in general, you can't. They're, they're pretty silent on the foreign front. They don't even have an army, right? They do have, they do have foreign policy, but it's really minimal um, compared to something like the US. And so the ideas of that are very different. Um, so if you were to say, oh, I, I recommend, I love Costa Rica. I vacationed there last week. No one would ever come up to you and say, oh, you agree with this election process that they have. You'd be like, what are you talking about? How does anything I do relate to their internal election process that has nothing to do with me? I don't know how it works. I don't know what's true about it. There's just like all these things. The second piece there is the implication that it supports every policy. I dare you to find any person anywhere in the world who agrees with any government anywhere in the world 100%. I bet you can't even find government officials anywhere that agree with 100%. Even in monarchies, go to some place with a really strong totalitarian monarchy that has basically complete control. We're talking some Middle East countries, we're talking maybe Southeast Asia, some places that there's just outrageous levels of monarchical control of the, the, the government. I guarantee you go to that king or queen or emperor or whatever, and you say, do you agree with every single thing your government does? They'd be like, no, there's some things I just can't, I can't get around to fixing, or uh, there's some things I haven't been able to get my hands into, and, and, and I know that something's wrong. Even when they have total control, never will you get a person, including the person in charge, to have 100% agreement. So the idea that by being a tourist and visiting any place, by willing to step into a place intentionally, automatically means that you agree with a thing where the, something like 99% of what the government does anywhere in the world, you can't know about. Governments are mostly black boxes. They're incredibly secretive um, by nature or by intent, whatever. If you went to America, there is so much that goes on in the government that you can't possibly know about. Even as an American who spends time studying political science and puts a bunch of effort into it, you have barely scratched the surface of all the things going on in government. You can't know. There's some things that are very visible and you can be upset with them, you can like them, whatever. But to, to have the idea that you automatically, by visiting a country or by willing to stay in a country, automatically agree with every action their government takes or might take in the future, doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. And there's no person being honest who would think so. That's just not true. There's a lot of people who will use that as an attack. And this is where it gets really important for you, my viewers, to know that people are going to come up to you and say, oh, you support, and they'll cherry pick anything that they want. And it's often not even a thing that's true. And that's part of the misleading thing is part of the, you know, the trick is they'll make up or imply some action that a government supposedly is taking and accuse you of supporting that action by being a tourist, by watching a video, something like that. And, and that makes no sense. First of all, because often that action, you didn't, they're, they're trying to make it so you don't question the action, right? Ah, this, this, this uh, government has been, you know, strip mining for lithium and they murder millions of people at every mine and they, they just dump the bodies in the mines. Terrible, terrible, terrible. You're supporting it by visiting that country. Never mind the fact that there's no lithium. There aren't millions of people in the population. Like none of that happened. They can imply it. And then you're stuck on this defensive of, I don't support everything that they do. And ignoring the fact that that isn't a thing that's even plausible. Or that's a thing that's unestablished. The second part of this, and this is the tricky part. The first part is easy to dispute, right? No, no, there's no way that by uh, living here, or by promoting the people, the culture, the food, tourism, or anything like that, could ever imply that I'm supporting or not supporting the government. It's unrelated. It's just a completely separate thing. So that that's the part, though, that we want to talk about, right? It's the part that we're driven to. The question, does this imply this? No. Living here implies, if that was to imply that, then by watching this video or emailing me or having thoughts about Nicaragua would also imply that you must be supporting the country. And of course, we would say there's no way that that is true. And it's not. It's not true. But the part that's hidden here, and this one's buried quite a bit, is it implies that there's something the government is doing that we shouldn't support or it's surprising that we would support. Now, let's be clear. Again, every government in the world has some aspects that nobody would like, or there's always an aspect that everybody wouldn't like. Maybe there are always different aspects, but there is no government that any person universally likes, even kings who completely control the government, completely control. It just, just doesn't exist.
So the idea that there's someone just has a blanket acceptance doesn't exist within the human context. But the implication here is that we have, one, a guide to the behavior of governments and that they can lean to things that we should support and things that we shouldn't support. This is all implied, but there are so many conversations that use this implication that's very important. So first of all, we don't really have that with governments. Um, you, you can, again, with foreign policy or there's, there's really extreme circumstances, right? If we were to talk about Germany in 1943, yeah, you can easily say, okay, we have to not support the government. Like it, there's a there's a line that has been crossed. But if we're talking about normal functional governments, then we don't have that stuff, right? And there's going to be in basically every government everywhere in the world some things that you will like if you know about them, and there will be some things you dislike if you know about them and, and agree with or don't agree with, right? But in most cases, it is a gray area. Right. Even within the U.S. with the very heated, very divisive Republican and Democratic system, very few things are a hard line. They're just, well, we lean really far this way. Or we lean really far this way. They, they tune things in one direction or another very strongly, perhaps. But they're not saying that it's a binary yes or no. They're saying a mostly or barely. Right. It's, it's it, just like the, the debt ceiling. Right. No one is completely opposed to raising the debt ceiling. Some people want to raise it a lot. Some people want to raise it a little. Some want to curtail the spending. Some want to cut way back on spending. Some want to increase spending, right? It's all it's all tuning. It's not this very clear binary. Sorry, I was coughing a little bit. But there's a further implication, and this is where it gets really important. It implies that even if there were ways that you could gauge governments in this way, where like, oh, I can't support this government for this reason, or this one for this reason, uh, generally. So, and just be real clear, the kinds of things, the kinds of reasons that tend to be promoted by the United States are, are really, really terrible things generally, right? They tend to promote that it is bad to not copy the United States. And that as a concept is bad, right? It's bad to even think that, right? It's not that the United States doesn't have a good system. Maybe its system is great. But the idea that all people should copy it is fundamentally evil. Right. That is it's just a bad thought that people might want to learn from it. Absolutely. That people may want to take pieces and learn and, and, and copy that they might want to copy. Great. All that's fine. It's the that if you don't copy, if you don't do this, that it's bad. And America itself doesn't agree with that concept. They promote it. But foreign policy of the United States is strongly against countries having the same government as the United States, the same form as government as the United States. So that is not something that within the U.S. government there's even agreement upon. And so how do you ever support the U.S. government in this kind of way that we're saying, well, you have to uh, support everything because it has a dichotomy of agreement. It has, oh, it says this is the only type of government that it thinks is okay. But when other countries action it, they say, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. You should do something else that ends up helping us with our foreign policy rather than our political policy, right? It's, it's complicated, but it means that this kind of question can never apply for someone coming from an American context. If you think America is a place you could go, it rules out these kinds of questions. But so the, the bigger thing here is in the real world, nobody can really know what a government is doing. So the implication here is not only that there is this, this ability to judge a government and say, oh, okay, we don't, we don't agree or we do agree, but that we also are aware of the actions of the government, of any government, to a point where we could then assess against that guideline. And here's the reality. There's an implication here that something has happened that I have to agree or disagree with. But he's not saying what it is. A lot of people do say things, and those things are unestablished. They may be out of context. They may not be uh, verified. Uh, tons of the news that we see about Nicaragua comes from the United States. Well, if you go to the State Department website and read their, their website about Nicaragua, it is clearly false. It is full of misinformation. So what we know is that the United States gives false information when Nicaragua is the context. We can assume they probably do with everywhere, but we'll, we only are checking this one in this particular context. So we can't trust anything that we get from the United States about Nicaragua. That's known. We also know that the United States has no obligation to be honest with its own citizens. The Propaganda Act under Obama says they can tell you anything that they want in order to further American foreign or domestic policy. 
So if by manipulating you into thinking something is true, is beneficial to the United States government in some way, not to the people, but to the government, then it is free or compelled to mislead you for its own benefit. So the United States in this, uh, in this context acts as an enemy to its own citizenry. It is out to manipulate you, not for your good, but for its good. Uh, so we cannot use, by definition, anything coming from the US. And if you were to think in this train that, okay, so countries do bad things, and if they do so ours is someone who stays in America in agreement that Americans, that they should not be told the truth, and they should be manipulated, and they should, you know, uh, be a unwitting long arm of foreign policy. That seems like something you wouldn't want to be associated with. You wouldn't want people to imply that you agreed with. And of course, being an American does not do that, right? Americans hate that that has happened to them. It is something that they can't avoid. They have no power to do anything about it. Every American would say, no, I would like to be told the truth. Thank you very much. And I would like the information I get about other places to be true. I don't want to be manipulated into doing something against my own interest. I want, you know, sure, I want America to succeed, but I want it not to be at my cost, right? I don't want to be cheated. I don't want other people hurt unfairly so that we can benefit. And who benefits, right? Who knows, right? So that's not something Americans want. And this is why uh, when we're talking about this kind of thing, it's very important to separate places, their governments, from the people of a, of a, a, a region. And so when we say, oh, we love Nicaragua, we mean the place. We love Nicaragua, the country, the people, the food, the culture, the music, the weather. Has no implication that it means the government, right? It doesn't mean not the government. It doesn't mean anything. And the same with if you say you're going to America or you like Americans, it does not imply that you like or dislike the government. It doesn't imply that you agree or disagree with how it does things. It means that you like the job opportunities, the uh unbelievable wonders of nature, the uh, incredible diversity of the people, the uh, amazing technological advances. There's so many things to like about America. It doesn't in any way imply that you also like the government. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know anything about it. That's all possibilities. It's not implied. So that's, that's a very important thing that this is, uh, they're implying that the government in question has done something not something they've mentioned, but something, and that we're tacitly or even actively agreeing with it by the nature of being a tourist. But what it is, is very much disputed. I'm not aware of any actual established thing that could be brought up in this context that is meaningful, that is large, and anything that would compare to the actions of the United States, for example, right? Um, especially in the current, uh, the current um, world state, the difference in things you would be appalled by fall so far that the U.S. Is, is so far on a difficult side of that right now. And keep in mind that the, Internet, the International Court of Justice has ruled in U.S. versus Nicaragua against the U.S. and the U.S. refused to settle its debts. So we're talking about um, in many cases, we don't know 100% that all these cases is the United States uh, providing this, but the context, the way that this is presented only makes sense in American context. No, any other country in the world would instantly be like, this statement makes no sense. But to Americans, because of the, the very well-drilled religious nature of political discourse, uh, some of these things can sound somewhat reasonable if you're speaking to and from Americans. So because I'm American, a lot of people think that they can say these things that I won't catch this, this fundamentally flawed context, or they are American themselves and don't realize how crazy this context is and how to apply it to other places. If we applied the same rules to the US or France or Italy or Spain or whatever, it would England, it would suddenly be like, oh my gosh, that's so much worse. How can I stay? I have to leave, but where are you going to go? Because every country in the world will fall afoul of those rules if, if that's how we look at it. Uh, so, <clears throat> so we have to step back and say, okay, we don't know. Um, and, and if there are people who do know, if some terrible thing has happened, then somewhere there's someone who does know, they know. But how do they let everyone else know, right? That's very difficult. Uh, and so um, in this situation, we're dealing with a lot of propaganda. We're dealing with a lot of misinformation. We're dealing with a lot of things that are out of context. We're dealing with a lot of things that are old. Um, I've been here for a long time. And in this time, you know, have, you know, good and bad things happened? Yeah, everywhere. That's, that's how things work. Is anywhere perfect? No, nowhere is perfect, right? 
but this there's this implication when you're in Nicaragua that there is this list of things that are happening that that uh, you you might be supporting, but no one's actually ever seems to be willing to come out and say, okay, here's a witness to this. Here is uh, a factual news report about this. It's like our thing with the dogs and the cat vaccines, right? We got videos where clearly fake news was created to make it look like vaccines didn't exist. But here on the ground, we can show all these things. And, and you know, we have the resources. We know the resources. We know these people didn't reach out to get help. They're claiming they have to spend tens of thousands of dollars. And they're telling us about it even before... They do it, but all they had to do is instead of telling us that something bad had happened, say, I'm afraid something bad's going to happen. How can I work around it? And we'd say, this is so easy. I don't know how you missed this, but here's all the ways you can get free help. Here's all the ways you can get cheap help. Here's all the ways that even if every single thing in Nicaragua failed, which we are unaware has ever happened in a rabies type case, here's how you could go to a neighboring country very easily, very cheaply and deal with it there. We had so many ways to work around these things. It was clear that this was fake news, right? Because we're in a position of being the ones to monitor it. Like who would be the point of contact that you went to that we don't know about, right? There wouldn't be because we're that prominent thing. It's kind of like I once dealt with an actual business scammer and they didn't do their homework to know who they were in the meeting with and they uh, tried to use me as a reference against myself. They didn't know what job I held, and they mentioned a government position and said this position in the U.S. government uh, does this thing. And we're like, and you're busted because I was in the meeting and I was the government official. I was a soft official. I wasn't exactly hired by the government. I was a contractor to the government, but I was the person. I wasn't like, I work for this office. I'm involved in this thing. I'm the exact decision maker that they mentioned in the U.S. government. And we're like, obviously, you just lied, right? That is the end of it. You can't claim that I did this thing. I'm sitting right here and I'm the one telling you everything you just said is fake. Like they were not prepared for that. But that's kind of the situation here. We're here observing on the ground. We know that there's tons of this fake stuff coming out every day. It just, it doesn't play out in the real world. Could something be going on? Of course it could. Of course. And, and there is in every country, everywhere on earth, there are bad things that happen. But how much do we know about them and how much do we know when they're true or not? It's really tough. And uh, we have to accept that there's going to be a lot of this uh, implication going on and because that's the tool, right? Lacking uh, strong Reuters and Associated Press diligent news reporting, we're left with this people who have never been here, right? And this is a big thing. When you live here in Nicaragua, you really quickly realize, uh, and, and this came out, uh, we were talking about the PricewaterhouseCoopers stuff. We were talking about things that are very far afield. You suddenly get all these stories and I see articles written with all this detailed information about like cryptocurrency in Nicaragua or business incorporation in Nicaragua. And I'm like, I know because, you know, I'm involved in every aspect of large areas of business in the country in the second largest city and, and cross borders with a lot of things and, and talk to a lot of people. These people would have to work with people we know and if they did, we'd be aware that they're doing it. So we know that they're doing this stuff without ever coming to the country, without ever talking to the actual businesses that are here, without talking to the actual uh, government offices that are here. These things aren't actually happening. If they were, we'd see them. And another great example is Lonely Planet. And this has become a big joke here in the country. Lonely Planet came here something like 2015. I don't know the exact year. And in that year, they checked out a bunch of places and wrote this guide that was roughly current at the time. In the nearly decade since then, they've continued to publish Nicaragua travel guides, but they haven't come back. And it would be easy to know because in a major tourist area like we're in, every single business talks to each other. You couldn't go to a single beach as Lonely Planet in all of Leon without all of Leon knowing. There's no way. We all talk to each other. That information is all shared. And we all talk about when the last time Lonely Planet was there, right? We know the last time they're at every single place. And if you go to their travel guides, half the businesses aren't there. The ones that they say are thriving and popular are, are losing money and, and desperately empty. Everything is wrong. Every bit is completely skewed. And they, you know, if you went by their guide, you would just go from place to place to place and be like, this place hasn't been open in so long to the point where people are like, I don't even remember if this was a restaurant. I don't remember if this is a hotel, right? It's been so long. Um, but that's 
how easy it is to, to sell that information on the outside. And so since there's very little, it's such a small market, there aren't those auditors. People are just saying whatever they want to say. They say, ah, you know, I looked up some old rules. I just threw some stuff together. Who's going to check? And even if they do check and they come back on, right, your, your accounting auditors or your uh, cryptocurrency article writers, what are you going to do? Right? You can't sue them. You didn't pay for that or whatever. They're just making a quick buck by guessing and writing something that sounds reasonable. Oh, in Nicaragua, people are struggling due to a lack of um, official government structure for the... Yeah, that's, that's a reasonable thing to say. I'm sure somebody is struggling like that that would like to do it and lacks government structure. You can't exactly deny it, but the whole article wasn't true. It was not verified. It didn't come from someone actually researching something. And fundamentally, it was trying to sell services that when you followed those services didn't exist because they were assuming that the people who would follow for the services would be in a jurisdiction that they handled. When we followed up with Nicaragua, they said, oh, I'm sorry, we don't support Nicaragua. We're like, that's funny. You wrote an article about how you support Nicaragua, right? That's how lazy they were. They're just using AI and automated writers that just copies the information in many of these cases or whatever. So, so, that kind of insane lack of knowledge to the outside world about everything that's happening here, you have to realize is true. Uh, and then you start to see this pattern of everything you're told, oh, such and such is happening. Is it? How do you know? How does even the US government know? Right? They probably do, but they're definitely not in a position of sharing their information with you, and they can't share how they know with you. But they have to pay to have agents all over the country, which they do in most places. Uh, most places around the world, they pay, and they do have people on the ground all over the place. That's how they gather information. But private companies aren't doing that. The news, the, the news can't afford to do that. Like It's very, very, very difficult in these very remote areas and very small markets uh, to have that kind of stuff. And so when you hear people making claims about things that have happened anywhere in the world, especially in these small markets where we don't have a ton of oversight. When they talk about New York City, you're talking about, well, if this happened, there would have been a million uh, witnesses. So you can verify that pretty easily. But when you're talking about Nicaragua, they're often saying, oh, you know, this thing happened on the beach. Well, if it happened to be the beach that we're on, every possible witness is someone we would know, right? And it didn't happen, right? This, this didn't happen here. Or we've seen things in the news where we're like, yeah, we know that guy. And that, and it's completely fake, right? Or it's incredibly misleading. They're leaving out the, the relevant details. Um, so, so that implication is the real thing they're trying to sneak in when these kinds of statements are made. That's what you got to watch for. Not the part that's obviously the question. Why doesn't it mean this when you do that? Yeah, you can dispute that easy. But then the thing that they're sneaking in, we're just assuming you know the same that we know something happened in you. No, I don't know that that happened. I have no reason to believe that that happened. And I don't even know what thing, but I don't want to get into a position of disputing those things. I'm just going to say, you can't use leading questions. Don't let anyone do it to you. Simply say, okay, prove the thing. Prove this. And then let's answer, uh, does my living here mean that I accept this unrelated thing that I don't know about? Now, the last part of this is, shouldn't I put on a disclaimer? So what exactly would I be disclaiming? This is a bit weird. Do you put on a disclaimer about every potential law that someone could break in any country you ever talk about? No, of course not. Do you talk about, you know, don't drive drunk, you could get arrested? No, people know. Do you say don't steal from people, you could get in trouble? No. So saying that you shouldn't go out and try to influence local politics, which is against the rules in basically every country in the world, and if, even where it's not against the written rules, it is unethical and no one should ever do it. It is not something that anyone should ever have to be warned about, and it is very common knowledge that as a tourist, you shouldn't be doing it. And it is illogical for someone to want to do it. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you be essentially, uh, or especially, because because you don't know. Why would you, especially knowing that you don't know anything about how the government works, it is not your government, you have no interest in it, there's no reason for you to be involved or care, and you don't have deep insight into it, and you're coming from some outside place, so you, you just, you, you, then you come here, or anywhere, right, you come to a new place, and you say, oh, I don't like the way I assume one, your government works, and two, I don't like the decisions that the populace has made. I need to influence them. It's not my country, so the results shouldn't happen good for me, but I'm going to influence it because I don't like how other people govern themselves. That's incredibly, incredibly bizarre because it is not beneficial to the person to do, 
unless they're acting as a foreign agent, of course, and it is, and they're just there to harm the country, in which case, you know, you're acting as a, uh, a criminal, and you should expect, uh, you're, you know, you're no different than any spy or anything like that. They know, right? You don't need a disclaimer for those things. Uh, and if you're not working for a foreign government, then why would you be having this kind of interest, right? Even, and if you were truly interested, you'd be looking to learn about it, not looking to influence it. And it's because it doesn't benefit you to manipulate how people govern in, in a place that is not your own, um, even as a resident, right? It doesn't matter. What you care about is the results of the, go the government, right? Do they fix my potholes or do they not, right? And, and someone asked this question, is it okay to complain when a pothole doesn't get fixed? Yeah, it's absolutely okay. You're not complaining about the government or the way people are governed. You're complaining about the road, right? I would like this pothole fixed. I don't care how you get to it. I don't care if you elect a king. I don't care if you take a vote on every pothole and, and make a community decision. I don't care if you elect an, an overseeing person in charge of roads who decides which potholes are more important. I don't care how you do it. I want this pothole fixed. That's my goal, right? However that's done. When you are a resident or a tourist, that's what you care about. And that's all you care about. When you are a citizen, especially when you're born in a place, then it makes sense under most circumstances that you can care about how you're represented. Oh, I do want this pothole fixed, yes, but I care about the process of determining which pothole gets fixed. But even that, for the most part, average people shouldn't care about that as much as they often do, but it makes sense when it's your government and you're concerned about your representation because you're concerned about how you'll be represented in the future. Well, yes, I can get this pothole fixed, but what if it comes at the cost of me having no say in the future and then things I need that are more important, like a bridge being out, get ignored, right? So you do care about the, the process in a different way. But as a tourist, you never care about the process. You only care about the results. And so that's very important. We don't need a disclaimer because it's not going to come up, not in a legitimate circumstance. So if you're coming here as a foreign agent and you're going to obviously act unethically, yes, you know you're taking risks. And if you're coming here and just being hateful and trying to do damage to the country just for fun, again, you know that you're doing that. You don't need a disclaimer for that. So you don't need disclaimers against breaking obvious rules, and you don't need disclaimers against acting badly. But there's, again, another implication here, right? What is said, and what is always said in these contexts, is you're going to get in trouble or some bad thing is going to happen. And people never talk about what that bad thing is. Even in the most extreme circumstances, generally what we hear about as the bad thing is that your tourist visa does not get renewed or maybe gets revoked early. But that's, I've never heard of that actually happening. That your tourist visa does not get renewed, yes, that could definitely happen. And it could happen anywhere, and you don't need a law in the books to do it. In the United States, there's a very strong freedom of speech thing, even for tourists, where they mostly allow anyone, including non-Americans, to pretty much say anything you want. There are limits, for sure, but it's, a, it's pretty flexible. However, depending on what you say, any person along the path of approving your uh, tourist visa has the option of rejecting it based on their personal opinions of things that you said, based on official opinions of things that you said, or any other factor that they want. When you're a tourist, you never, and if you're a resident, and if you're, if you're anything, and you're getting government permission to come in and you have to get something renewed, they don't have to renew that thing and they don't have to make official rules about it. That in Nicaragua, they've codified some of those rules to make it clear for people so that if you're coming from a place like America and the U.S. has pressured you a little bit to do something that you know you shouldn't do, but you think, well, maybe, maybe I can get away with it, they've codified it so you don't have those questions. Sure. But that's all. They're just codifying something that every country in the world already has. And if you think that's not true, ask, do your employers, do border control, does anyone, do they ever look at your social media? Do they ever ask for your contact information? Do they ever, yeah, of course they do. And they have that automatically. And do you ever hear of someone getting denied and they don't know why they were denied? Of course you do. If you know anyone who's applied to go to different countries, you're aware that people get denied from time to time, sometimes quite often. A lot of people struggle to get into the United States. I know a lot of people who cannot get tourist visas to the United States, even though they have good jobs, they're stable, they can easily afford it, they have no criminal records, and yet they get denied. They're ideal tourists. What is the U.S. looking at? Well, we don't know, but very potentially, they're social media. And at least in some cases, we can be very sure that they are. In many cases, we can be sure that they're not. It's just one of many possibilities. But that governments all over the world are choosing not to let people in based on things they've said 
not even in their own countries, but in foreign countries, and they say, well, we don't want them repeating that here, or they wait until you're in the country, or and, you wait until you're in the country, and also continue to monitor what you say, and then say, okay, it was one thing to say it when you're remote, but now that you're saying it when you're here, yeah, we can't, we're not going to renew that visa. But we're not going to tell you why we're not going to renew that visa. Here in Nicaragua, they're giving you the benefit of knowing why. And so it sounds like a terrible thing. Oh, you've been banished from the country. Yeah, you're a tourist who isn't allowed to return. The average Nicaraguan is defaulted to that scenario with the United States every day, right? 90%, I'm making up that number, but it's probably higher, not lower. 90% of Nicaraguans cannot get a tourist visa to the United States. They just can't. So the United States is enacting the punishment that people are appalled that Nicaragua might do in an extreme circumstance that, yes, I, I am aware that it has happened, but it's very, very rare. And when it does happen, we're only talking about denying the tourist visa, which by default, they let almost everyone in. So the allowance visa is like 99.99% in the case of Nicaragua. The denial rate in the United States is above 90%, I think, for Nicaraguans who want to go that direction. So it's only this tiny, tiny percentage in the one case. So being appalled that Nicaragua acts 0.01% of the time, the way that the United States acts 90% of the time, is a pretty weak position for someone coming from North America to take. Oh no, you're so awful. You're going to act like us. Just think about that for a little bit. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee to support this channel, you can at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Share on social media. Let people know if anybody is talking to you about these things and giving you, because this is like a standard template that they copy and paste. There's somewhere that this, there's a source of say it in this way that exists that provides a lot of people this relatively powerful template to try to either make you feel or discredit you uh, or to trigger your mental state be prepared, have this video, know what to say, know how to think about it, but also just link the video. You're pulling these tricks, not going to happen. Here's a whole bunch of things that don't add up. We're not going to fall for it. It's a powerful tool to have and something that does need to be addressed because it has nothing to do with Nicaragua. It is just a general template that they can use anywhere and say, oh, by just it's, it's way too easy to try to trick people in this way. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.